Dear brothers and sisters, let me remind you once again, all those who are going through a tough time, there is some block and bondages in your family, and you feel some evil afflictions, or somebody has done some black magic or something like this, and all those who feel this unnecessary fear and tension, and you feel nothing seems to be happening in your life, there is a solution which Bible gives you, and that is, when you serve God, all these block will be removed. When you serve God, this block will be removed. When you serve God, there are certain heritage for the servants of the Lord. There are certain heritage which God has appointed and given for the servant of the Lord. That will come to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And especially those who are in fear, confusion, tension, and all these things. We read Isaiah 54 verse 17. Let's read, No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. No, no weapon, weapon that, that is fashioned, fashioned against, against, against you shall prosper. prosper. No weapon means black magic, witchcraft, evil affliction, financial bondages, debt and sicknesses, problems. That is fashioned against you by the evil one. It will not prosper in your life. And you shall confute every tongue that rises against you. Anyone who is criticizing you, hurting you, destroying your, your name and your fame and your acceptance and everything, that will not work against you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Because you are serving God, therefore this is your heritage. Now, everyone, so those who are going through this problem, your next step, the first step is repentance. Go for confession. Get rid of all these sins and serve God. Serve God. How to serve God now? There are many ways to serve God. Serve God means serve in the word of God. Serve, serve the word of God. How? You can help in the parishes. With the help of your parish priest, you can help in your parishes. Or the best way that you can easily do is share the divine UK live streaming link with all your friends and family members tirelessly, diligently, consistently to all your friends so that all of them, if you have received blessing, they are also going to receive blessing. When you do it sincerely, taking as a responsibility, taking this job as a responsibility, then you are serving the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. And you will see the result in your life. You try. You test it. You first test it. For two, three months you test it and you see the difference. You also have to join the live streaming. It's not, that I, it, it's not enough that you share it, but you have to join in the live streaming for just these coming two months, at least two or three months, and you will see the deliverance. You will see the changes. Just test it and see. Because this is a promise of the word of God. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. And you shall confute every tongue that is rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their vindication from me, says the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Let's read this word of God. Psalm 23, verse 1 onwards. Psalm 23, verse 1 onwards. Let's read. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. King David pray like this. Lord is my shepherd. He himself was a shepherd. David, before becoming a king, he was a shepherd. He knows how a shepherd works. And he knows how a shepherd acts. He knows how he protected his sheep, how he pruned his sheep, how he guided his sheep, how he covered his sheep. He knew it. And that is why when he became king, he remembered God as his own shepherd. He says, he didn't say a geni any general word saying, Lord is shepherd. He didn't say the Lord is our shepherd. But he says, very lovingly, personally, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Because he knows how God protected him. There are many occasions where he was about to commit sin, God protected him, covered him. When he was attacked by enemies, he, God protected him. Saul, King Saul was chasing him and running after him to catch him and kill him. But he was covered by the protection of God. 
and when there was when he was hungry miraculously god gave him food and there are so many occasions he was covered covered protected protected and he knew these knowing all these things he said the lord is my shepherd praise the lord praise the lord. lord my dear brothers and sisters we also should be able to say this when we look back while to our life there are so many occasions where we were about to be caught publicly maybe for the mistakes that we committed but god protected us there are so many occasions where we were about to be killed or dead maybe because of sicknesses or maybe accidents or many other things but god covered us protected us there are so many occasions where we were about to commit terrible sins but god somehow helped us and we did not fall into sin there are so many occasions where we don't know what to do and god has sent the right people in right time to help us there are so many occasions god was guiding us in miraculously secretly and in a mysterious way he was guiding our daily path therefore we can also say the lord is my shepherd my personal shepherd i don't want to worry about anything i shall not want anything was to we read like this he makes me lie down in green pastures he, he makes, makes me lie down, down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he, he leads, leads me beside, beside still, still waters. waters my dear brothers and sisters you know the sheep they are very timid they don't if there is insecurity they will not lie down if there is any flies or any insects attacking them they won't lie down if they are only alone and the whole the herd is not together they will not lie down but when the shepherd takes care of all these aspects all the insects are chased out all the animals and insecurities everything is taken care by the shepherd and only when the sheep feels comfortable they will lie down and take rest and that is how the nature of the sheep sheep and many a time i remember when we went to uh, kenya and when we were uh, traveling together with some people some of our priest and then on the road we could see so many goats so many sheep and then the driver was talk- talking to us we call these uh, sheep stupid because they don't know what they are going to do next moment sometimes suddenly they will jump in front of the car in front of the vehicles or or just suddenly they 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 don't know where to go when they are alone especially so this is what they said so that is why they call like that those um, those um, uh, sheep so that is exactly what happens to sheep so if the shepherd is not there they will make mistakes after mistakes they will go to wrong places they will jump in front of the vehicles and they will be in, in uh, tragedies in their lives and that is why David says I am one of them I have, I was one of those stupid people but my shepherd led me in the right track he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters the sheep doesn't know where the water is available but the shepherd knows shepherd leads me beside still waters therefore i don't need to worry about what is going to happen tomorrow i don't need to worry about what to drink what to do what to eat tomorrow and where to sleep i don't need to worry because my shepherd has given me in the past all these things and my shepherd will lead me in the right track you know king david when he was running away from king saul he was lying and sleeping in the forest he was most of the time those days when he was running away from his king saul he was hiding in the caves and so many other places he had no place to sh- have shelter there was no shelter for him nowhere to lay he said but god led him and made him the king of israel knowing this he said the lord is my shepherd praise the lord praise the lord this is a great message for all of us as we uh, understand the meaning of every sentence and the background story of every psalm we will sing this song with, uh, with a different feeling Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Praise you Jesus. Praise Jesus. Jesus. Thank you Father. Thank you Father. Let's all pray together this Psalm 23 verse 1 to 3. 
let's re, uh, read together the lord is my shepherd the lord is my shepherd i shall not want i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he restores my soul he leads me in right paths he leads me in the right path for his name sake for his name sake praise the lord praise the lord he leads me in the right path for his name sake why his name for example if a shepherd is not a good shepherd may he will lose many sheep all enemies will come and take the sheep he will go to wrong places and then within no time the owner of sheep he may change the shepherd because shepherd is the shepherds it is affecting the image of the shepherd that means the shepherd is not a right shepherd he is he is not able to protect his sheep he is a wrong shepherd and therefore the bible says this shepherd our god he will never make mistake because any mistake is going to affect not the sheep but the the shepherd therefore his name sake his name is the name of the lord is so powerful merciful generous powerful and you know over all all knowing all these qualities are in the name of god therefore for his name sake he will show me the right path he will never make mistake praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus psalm 34 verse 7 we read the angel of the lord encamps around those who fear him the angel of the lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them and delivers them this psalm was written down when king david was running away from king saul king saul has appointed armies all over the country to catch david and kill him there were so many enemies not only these uh, king saul was after him even the philistines were against him and there was another uh, rebel group is also against him there were so many enemies surrounding him and he was running from one place to another from one forest to another forest he was hiding in caves and he was running but he was able to sleep peacefully in all those places and the reason he was saying the angel of the lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them he was so assured the one who appointed him as the king of israel he will never sleep he will never slumber he will never sleep he is awake he has appointed angel of the lord to encamp around those who fear him he knows that he fear the lord and therefore he knew he is safe my brothers and sisters do you fear the lord then you are safe then you may ask me father what is fear of the lord means fear of the lord means hatred to sin you don't want to compromise any sin you don't want to commit any sin you will not compromise with your holiness that is called fear of god fear of god means every occasion of sin you will get rid of it you will not tolerate even a single minute mind minute venial sin forget about mortal sins even minute venial sins you will not tolerate that is called fear of the lord and david said those who fear the lord the angel of the lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them praise the lord praise, praise the lord. lord bible says the hatred to sin is called fear of god praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus thank you father thank you father therefore let's examine our conscience and see do we have the fear of the lord if we have the fear of the lord we will avoid every minute occasion of sin you will not justify some people when i was they were addicted to alcohol drugs and drinks when we when we correct them they say father there are so many people are drinking even priests are drinking even they are do- doing like this therefore why can't i drink this sign of argument this this sign of um, justifying certain things is a clear sign there is no fear of the lord if you have fear of the lord wherever there is a sign of compromise will just get out of it there are so many things we avoid in our life when those sugar patients they avoid sugar those who have cholesterol patients though they avoid all kinds of these uh, fat if you can sacrifice these for your health 
why can't you sacrifice the, the certain things which are tempting you to fall into sin that the desire not to sacrifice is a clear sign there is no fear of god those who do not have fear of god they will bring some kind of justification for supporting their evil they will bring some kind of justification saying oh they are all doing these they are doing these then why can't i do do you want to imitate them or do you want to have the fear of the lord and follow him then the angel of the lord when you follow the lord radically sincerely without compromising the angel of the lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them praise the lord praise, praise the lord. lord first peter chapter 5 verse 8 and discipline yourselves discipline yourselves keep alert keep, keep alert. alert like a roaring lion your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour looking for someone to devour praise the lord praise the lord see in this sentence there are two things you have to see one is discipline yourself the second one is looking for someone to devour now who is this someone the devil is waiting to devour if you want to know who is the someone who is waiting whom the devil is waiting to devour and destroy then you have to read the first sentence that is discipline yourself keep alert the lord says through this word of god says discipline yourself keep alert because the devil is going around waiting to devour somebody and who is this somebody who have no discipline he is waiting to attack the one who is disip not having discipline not alert he is waiting for them he is moving around any everywhere there are people who have no discipline no discipline there is no fixed time for prayer 24 hours in front of computer mobile playing computer games no discipline and there are some people who are you know not respecting their parents not obedient to the church not obedient to the command of god not good in not doing their duty as a student not doing as a duty as a husband or wife or or priest or whoever may be not doing their duty don't discipline the devil is waiting for them he is looking for someone to devour that is why bible says discipline yourself keep alert we discipline yours first you do discipline yours because that is a problem what is the problem somebody is looking for someone to devour praise the lord praise, praise the lord. lord i remember when we were small when we were in india when we were in this semin- uh, i don't know where ex- uh, i don't remember exactly when we were traveling and then and in india you know sometimes the traffic rules are not kept properly but police will be hiding somewhere on the road and jump in front of to catch someone who is not um pro- following the traffic rules so when one day when we were traveling then suddenly the driver told everyone please put on the uh, seat belt and then everybody uh, put on the seat, seat seat belt because he knew somehow from the opposite vehicles were coming against they gave some signal that there is police on the road and therefore immediately want every traveler to put on the seat belt and so that they won't be caught so so why the police is waiting they are waiting to catch someone who is not disciplined not following the rules of the traffic so why this driver want before because you should not be caught the same way god is the bible the saint peter saint peter the pope first pope is warning people and saying discipline yourself why the lion is waiting on the way to catch those who are not disciplined praise the lord praise so the lord so the devil is waiting for those people who are not disciplined spiritually not disciplined physically not disciplined emotionally in every sense mainly the spiritual discipline there are some people who have no spiritual discipline no time for prayer there is no interest in prayer not going for sunday mass not going for confession not going for sacraments not interested in bible reading no connection with god no discipline spiritual discipline no wonder they are easily being a victim of the evil attack 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Discipline yourself. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Verse 9, we read like this. Resist him. Steadfast in your faith. How to resist? Strong in faith. So many people resisting the devil is out. They command, in the name of Jesus, I command you, command you, command you, get out. You are wasting your energy. Instead of that, you can say, in the name of Jesus, we command you to get out. But at the same time, the best one is to strong, make your faith strong. Read Bible, listen to the word of God, listen to the preaching, listen, go for retreat. The moment you do that, your faith is strong. And then even before you command, the devil will be running away from you. You just need to slowly say, I command you in Jesus' name, get out. They will immediately obey you because they know that you are strong in faith. Some people, they have no faith, no time to go for retreat, no time to listen to the preaching. They don't want to listen to the word of God and they just want deliverance prayer. Such people, they even, even if they scream, the devil will not go. Resist him steadfast in your faith. How to resist? Be steadfast in your faith. For you know that you are brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. Everyone is going through the same kind of suffering of the evil attack, evil afflictions. The only way to overcome this situation is steadfast in your faith and discipline spiritually. This is the only way you can defeat the devil. Praise the Lord. Praise the Thank Lord. you, Jesus. Thank you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The, the name, name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The righteous run into it and are safe. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Though it says very small sentence, there are lots of meaning in it. The name of the Lord means, it's not only the name, Jesus. The name of the Lord means, is the character of God. The name of the Lord means, character of God. Which are the name of God? That is what we were praying now. God is Jesus is merciful, compassionate, forgiving, loving, and He is the leader, He is the shepherd, He is the anointed one, He is the healer. All these are the name of the Lord. Therefore, all those who are in struggle, confusion, tension, fear, sickness, for you, the Lord is there. And He is the strong tower. That is why the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is not just the name, is the character of God, the different characteristics of God. That is called the name of the Lord. And therefore, is a strong tower. And he said tower, tower means a place, maybe a, a kind of a, a small area of place where you can hide. When we speak about strong tower, is not only in the Bible, it doesn't mean just a small tower, but it is a city. Because in the Bible, there is a situation, there is a permission God has given. Suppose if you by mistake commit a sin, maybe a murder, a terrible murder you happen to commit by mistake, not knowing. But if you commit a murder, all the others will come and kill you back or uh, they take revenge. Maybe the family members of the victim, they will come and attack you. Maybe the, the opposite family will come or maybe someone else. Or the friends of the man who is killed will come. If you happen to kill somebody by mistake, unknowingly, if you do some mistake, terrible mistake, not only about murder or any other mistake, any other sin you commit unknowingly, then God has kept some cities. It is called refuge, city of refuge. It is called city of refuge. There are so many cities of refuge in Israel. Anybody who is in trouble, they can go to that city. Once they are inside the city, nobody can, can come and catch them. No one is allowed. If someone goes inside the city of refuge and catch them or punish them, then they will be punished. So this is called city of refuge. So the best way, the moment you commit a terrible sin, by mistake, unknowingly, you can escape there and run into that city of refuge and then you are protected. That is the system. Let's read this passage. It is written in the uh, Numbers chapter 35 verse 9 onwards. Numbers chapter 35 verse 9 onwards. 
The Lord spoke to Moses saying, The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the Israelites, speak, speak to, to the Israelites, and say to them, and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, when you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall select cities to be select uh, to be cities of refuge for you. Then, then you shall, shall select cities to be cities of refuge, refuge for you. So that, so that a slayer, a slayer who kills a person, who kills a person without intent, without intent, may flee there. May flee there. Verse twelve. The city shall be for you a refuge from the avenger. The city shall be for you a refuge from the avenger. So that so the that slayer may not die until there is a trial before the congregation. So that the slayer may not die until there is a trial before the congregation. So this is for the safety of the man who committed a crime without intending it. God has created some cities of refuge in Israel. And let's read verse 13. Continue reading verse 13. The cities that you designate shall be six cities of refuge for you. And 14. You shall designate three cities beyond the Jordan and three cities in the land of Canaan to be cities of refuge. Because anybody who commit this mistake should have easy accessible to the nearby cities otherwise if there is a long way to go to a lonely city which is far then the enemies come and kill them so that is why God said made sure that they are able to reach the cities of refuge easily that is why six cities three out other side three this side and verse 15 these six cities shall serve as refuge for the Israelites for the resident or transient alien among them so that anyone who kills a person without intent may flee there. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. So this is a secret. And now let's read um, uh, Psalm 18.10. Psalm 18.10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Praise the Lord. Praise the the Lord. one who by mistake commits sin. The one who commits sin by mistake, not knowingly, not willingly, but because of their weakness, because of, because of their shortcomings, they fall into sin. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, most of you are joining in this live streaming. I'm, un, I'm sure that you are committing sin not knowingly, not willingly. You don't want to commit sin. You don't want to hurt anyone. You don't want to keep unforgiveness and hatred and you don't want to fall into unholiness and wrong things. But because of the weaknesses, you fall into sin. That is... They are called the righteous. They are ready to, God is ready to help you to be righteous. You run into it. Run into where? Run into this city of refuge. Which is the city of refuge here? The name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the, the Lord. presence of God. Now, when I am in the presence of God with a repenting heart, I am in the city of refuge. No evil can touch me. Now when I'm joining in this adoration with a repenting heart, rejecting and renouncing sin and Satan, I'm in the city of refuge. No devil can touch me and my family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That is why this word of God, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. They suddenly, don't, don't wait. Some people, they commit sin and they say, okay, next month I will go for a retreat. You are in danger. Immediately run. That is why God has created the city of refuge in, in different places so that people who are committing sin unknowingly, they can instantly run and escape. If they wait for one day, they are gone. Because the lion is waiting to standing, walking around like a roaring lion to devour somebody. That is why the church always say you should go for confession instantly. The moment you commit sin, don't wait. That is why God has kept the cities of refuge in many places so that easily they can get in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some people don't understand the seriousness of this. Therefore, they go for confession once in two years, three years. I really wonder how they survive. I really wonder how they can ask for protection from God, protection in the presence of God. The holy saints used to go for frequent confession. The moment they commit such sin, immediately go for confession. Praise the Lord. Praise Thank, the Lord. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.